Right, hello everyone. Today we've got uh, Judith with us. She has just started working for Seaford Baptist Church. Uh, I myself don't know Judith that well, so it's an opportunity for me to get to know Judith a bit better and ask a few questions and hopefully for everyone else to uh, find out a bit more about Judith, uh, her current role and uh, what she's done in the past. So thank you Judith for uh, sharing, sparing some time today to uh, chat to us. Uh, so you've just started working for Super Baptist Church, uh, literally in the past few weeks, a uh, very interesting time to start a new job role, probably not quite what you plan to do. Maybe first of all, tell us a bit about your job role and then maybe how you've been handling, you know, starting a new role during lockdown, social isolation and things like that. So my new role is called community worker at the cabin and really it is coming alongside the community and creating community already. Roger and the team have done a great job there. There's some fabulous people that um, I've, I have met because we've delivered flyers around the, you know, the cabin area. And so I've bumped into a few people keeping obviously the two meter distance. Um, and so really it's just, how do we create community? And it's a beautiful opportunity to say, how do we create community in this um, area? Mm. Brilliant. So um, coming in, how have you found, you know, starting a new job in in lockdown? I mean, it must have I don't know if you had much time to think about the job role before this happened and then you've had to change your plans or whether it has just been like, right, how am I going to, you know, try to build relationships with people when we're not actually supposed to see, you know, people in a certain role or a certain, in a certain way. Have you, uh, have you found that? I mean, it must have been challenging at trying to think of new initiatives, I suppose, and trying to think, you know, things that ha in a time where, you know, unprecedented times really. Yes, I am actually used to being in lockdown. So um, I lived through 10 years of civil war in Nepal and various earthquakes and uprising and riots. And so actually lockdown was um, a regular occurrence. And so, you know, you learn a lot of things, actually. One of them to trust God um, more because you can't control things. And so you hold everything lightly. And, and my goal really was just to build relationships, you know, before I started the job and before lockdown occurred. And so you can do that online. I have loved meeting um, the team, you know, leaders um, from the cabin area and just getting to know them online, spoken to them for about an hour and just ask certain questions, questions I know uh, don't skim over the surface of who they are and what their ideas, but actually dig deep. So mm. we've been asking questions like, how do you view God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? And those kind of questions help me get a greater grasp of who God is, but also helps me understand the perspective that they're coming from and the beauty that they bring into the body of Christ. And questions like, what are the top three values that you think we are to bring, you know, when we're working in the community and the cabin. And again, it just reveals a lot about people's hearts and desires. And, you know, I, I, to me, it's been a beautiful time of getting to know the leaders and seeing the, the unity and the relationships that they've built up with those in the cabin area. So it's mm. actually been a precious first month getting to know them and we had our first prayer meeting online last night mm. which is not easy as you can nope. imagine but they they did brilliantly and it was just so good I'm, I'm an extrovert when it comes to prayer I need other people to help me pray better and so I had lots of uh you know input there which has enabled me just to has recharged my prayer life I think for the cabin and the area and the community oh brilliant oh that sounds really good yeah it's definitely it's, it's a strange time I mean obviously for lots of people it's it's a really hard time being in lockdown but there's definitely different groups of people and other people are actually flourishing and i myself there's definitely challenges to homeschooling and uh being with our family 24 7 but also there's uh you know actually there's certain parts of it i really enjoy i've spent more time with my wife and children than i have done in in you know years probably in one section of time so there's some real great bits to take from it as well aren't there and and i think with uh connecting with those around us I think that's been, you know, especially our neighbours, we do see our neighbours actually knocking on the door, checking they're okay, asking if they need to go to the shops. And I think that's the case in a lot of communities as well. And I, I imagine up at the cabin because there is a real sense of community in that area. So I think there's definitely, although this is uh, a terrible time and there's lots of bad things happening, there's some definitely some positives to take from it as well and some real things that hopefully we can continue, continue on after this time as well. So, yeah, hopefully that, that definitely happens. And, Oh, that's really good to hear. Uh, you mentioned about your time in uh, Nepal there. Um, I was in Nepal for about a month 
10 years ago um, and loved it, loved the culture. So you were saying you were there during the Civil War, so that would have been uh, quite a bit before then. 2000, yes. 2000, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'd love to hear a bit more about it. I mean, we've still got some connections out there and we lived with a family um, who ran a, a church out there in, in Kathmandu. But um, we, our, our, one of our main aims is just to get back out there because we just <laughs> love the people and love the country. But I'd love to hear some more of what, what you got up to out there in some of your time. Yeah, I, I think um, when you go to another country, you know, on mission, it really is a humbling experience because you, you end up learning more than you actually bring. And, and, and I, I love that, uh, you know, the, the people of Nepal are, are people who every part of their life from morning till night is an act of worship granted to the thousands of gods that they have. But I could, you know, I learned that actually worship isn't a worship song. It's actually your whole life is dedicated towards your God. Um, they are a people who would feed you. Uh, at the expense of not having food themselves, mm. uh, you know, hospitality, which is to a stranger, because hospitality in scripture is never to your friends. You know, the actual word and the, the idea that behind the Greek word hospitality is, as a spiritual gift is to strangers. And, you know, once they, they know that you're, the first question they ask you, if you're going on mission, is how long you're staying. I said a minimum of 10 years, because mm. it took me 10 years to really get to know everybody in my neighborhood in the UK. And I thought if it, if it takes me 10 years to get to know the people in my street in the UK, how long is it going to take me to get to know people in a different culture with a different language and a different place? So as soon as they heard that I was staying a minimum of 10 years, you know, you're accepted and you're welcomed and uh, then re relationships are built. And so, I, as you say, I love the people of Nepal. I mean, I, I grew to love trekking. I actually went out with um, the inability to walk. And the crazy thing was, um, the first job I had there, I was meant to be the vice principal but they, at the school, the mission school, but they were short of a PE teacher. And I'd always wanted to be a PE teacher, but I actually had a, a condition called chondromalacia, uh, which is wrong with your knees. And so, yeah. you know, to walk was painful. And so I thought, Lord, this is a really odd thing because I actually went, was about to train to be a PE teacher at Loughborough University and then ended up um, <laughs> being an economics and business studies teacher and history teacher, do you know what I mean, in IT and various mm -hmm. other subjects because um, I couldn't, uh, you know, I, my knees failed me and I couldn't become a PE teacher. So here I was in 2000, you know, many years after I'd started teaching, uh, being a PE teacher. <clears throat> and then they asked me to take a trek for the year seven students. And, uh, you know, I nearly said no. And then they said, you know, we really need you to do this. Will you lead a trek? And one, I'd never been trekking in the Himalayas. And two, I knew that I couldn't walk. And I just, I just prayed with my prayer partner out there. And, and she, she knew me from back in the UK. She's a, she was a doctor out there in the leprosy hospital. And she had uh, lived with me when she'd had various placements, um, you know, before she went out to Nepal. And so she knew the condition of my knees. And we just prayed. And the Lord said, as long as you keep praising me, you'll be able to walk. And... And it was just, it was a miracle. I mean, to be honest mm. with you, my knees were fine on that first trek and we had a brilliant time in the Himalayas because it's a tented trek so that you, you're not staying in lodges or anything. No. You're just exploring and going where you want to with the kids, which is just amazing. <laughs> Every muscle in my legs hurt, mm. but not my knees. Do you know what I mean, <laughs> you know, in fact, I was, I was hysterically laughing. It was so painful. Um, but the Lord just showed me that actually by praising him, you know, I had had, um, I had been not able to walk since 1984 and wow. in the year 2001, um, I tr did my first trek and I've completed <laughs> 32 treks and I've uh, done Everest base camp area eight times, uh, wow. leading groups of people up there. And so, you know, I am so, so grateful to God because it was a place that, you know, a miracle happened for me. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. Oh, and I'll, I'll echo, I mean, our, one of our experiences, we just uh, received amazing hospitality when we're out there. The one I remember, which you know that these people have so little and uh, part of what they were doing, so the people working with, they have these, what they call satellite churches in different parts of uh, Nepal. And also they have um, uh, orphanages, which, and they, uh, send the children to to the schools locally and give them a you know uh, really help them out but um one of them they were building 
there was a parson this was like a tiny small church almost gathering somewhere south of Kathmandu I'm not even sure where we were they took us on the back of these motorbikes I couldn't I couldn't point it out on a map and uh, we got to this little hut this the the family's home and they invited us in and sat us down and being in a different country you know I was generally okay but a couple of times whilst we're there you know had a bit of a dodgy stomach and we'd been on this long trek wasn't feeling a hundred percent and uh, we sat down and Ned uh, made this fish curry for us with these little fishes in not uh, and I would normally have eaten it but I wasn't feeling great and then we found out that the pastor the dad of the household had walked overnight to go fishing for these fish and brought them back to make this special curry just for us and so I sat there and I, I ate pretty much all of it somehow I think and through prayer as well but yeah the, the every meal we knew we were receiving was probably one of the best meals that they would have all, all year so yeah such such an amazing country and an amazing experience it does so. encourage you to pray before every meal as well <laughs> yeah. because <laughs> to yeah. me, i had a number of sicknesses i mean that was the other bonus about being there i lost three stone in weight you know, <laughs> through, through being sick um, yeah. and, and through trekking do you know what i mean mm. actually getting fitter because i could actually walk again so mm. um yeah oh, it did me good, actually health wise eventually <laughs> yeah oh it's amazing to hear